Um, my name's Randy Carey, I'm from Minneapolis area. Um, I, people have branded me a lot with the ACL, Access Control, and um, actually my talk is on role-based access control, which is a little different than ACL, but it's parallel, so I'll explain that a bit more <coughs> later. Um, to just get an idea, how many of you actually developed websites for first? And how many of you were like users that have Joomla? Okay. Um, all right. Can you just give me a little feedback? What interests you with access control? Is it, is it, are you interested in the topic? Or is it kind of like the US election? If you don't like any of them, but you have to choose one? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, uh, any, it, just give me some feedback so I know more who I'm talking to. Go ahead. We manage about 125 websites. Ah. So we have a lot of users, and uh, they range from really good to absolutely keep them away from the website, so you, you just have a variation of what we're looking for, how sophisticated users, it's, and, and access control is a big part of when they're looking, especially when setting up and saying, can these people access this area, can someone access this, and, but can I still control the core of the site? And sure. So. Okay. Yeah. That's Any, exactly what I... Yeah, I think, I, yeah, I think it's very important. Um, access control has been kind of around the 1.5 but really took off when it went to 1.6, which became the 2.5, about five, six years ago. And uh, for commercial um, CMSs, access control is a very important feature, and I'm glad Joomla got it, because once they got there, they really offer an awful lot that um, commercial organizations want, because I couldn't deliver a lot of the things I deliver now to my corporate clients if um, I didn't have ACL. Um, so, so role-based access control. I mentioned it's a little different than ACL, and I'll get to that in a bit. That's no, right. This is working. Okay. I see access control as actually solving two different types of problems or issues. One is security, uh, making sure that people don't get access to information they are not supposed to get to. Um, one of my big things that really drew me more to the ACL is I'm all about usability, how users manage the content management system, how they enter data, that sort of thing. And I actually have a presentation tomorrow that's going to be covering more of that. Uh, so to me, usability is really important, how we have access control and break people into roles, and that helps give us a more tailored experience on the back end. For instance, here's a county site that I did. And we have, they had like 16, 18 different departments plus webmaster and all these different roles. We had over 20 roles. And each person, each time the person would log in with a particular role, they would get a different screen that is tailored to them in the back end. They don't all see the same things. So you see there might be one for the county attorney, there might be one for the assessor, one for uh, sanitation department, one for the sheriff. Everybody had their own tailored to their own specific um, information that's relevant for them. And that's how I use role bases, more for the back end. But it also can be done for security as well. Following that theme, I believe that we should be giving um, a user experience that uh, varies based upon who is using the system. For instance, the person building the website is different than the person managing the content. And I think it's, we should be giving them a different user experience, a different screen, maybe simpler for those managing content, and only the content that they need to manage, as you see in these two. And again, that's more my topic tomorrow. But that's how it ties into my interest in the, the access control and role-based system. Um, there are different types of projects out there. And I think almost everybody can benefit from a role-based system. Um, you've got the do-it-yourselfers, you've got the, what I call the client professional system, uh, which is when the client is hiring a professional because they don't want to take the time to put the website together. They want to hire an expert. And then you have not only the, the client professional, but now they have staff, many people managing it. It's Role-based really has a big impact for the bottom two. And if you are developers of a website or you're actually here, you're probably your business model for being a website, whichever end you are, is probably one of the bottom two. You're hiring up, you probably either have a professional in-house who's building the website and somebody else is maintaining content, or you've hired a professional to build the website. And then by having different roles, we can build 
um, more usability features in based upon that particular person's role. Even the do-it-yourselfer though might benefit from um, this, in other words, they want to get in and have a role for when they manage the website, whether it's security issues, updates, but they also maybe want to log in a different way and get access to just the content parts when they're managing the content. However, most people are do-it-yourselfers are looking for the simplest way. They aren't really that deep into the CMS and they probably aren't going to take the time to do something like that. I want to emphasize that ACL is, and role-based is not exactly the same. And I'm going to use this analogy of like words and a sentence. You can throw out a lot of different words. They may have meaning, they may not. But there's certain syntax that we know <coughs> makes a sentence that makes it meaningful and having purpose. With the ACL as just a set of technical configurations or technical capabilities for groups and uh, permissions, um, access levels, things like that. But they have to be put together the right way to really be role-based. So Joomla's ACL actually can be role-based, but if you don't do it right, it's just a jumble of words. <coughs> so I'm going to be focusing on this talk. I've given many talks on um, how to configure Joomla's ACL. I'll touch on some of that here, but I want to talk more about what role base is all about. So when you start working with Joomla's ACL, that you have a better idea of what the goal is we're trying to do. Role based access control is actually, uh, it was a formal study over 20 years ago. It uh, started out like 28 different organizations seeing their needs for access control, looking at best practices, and they wrote papers on this and published it. So what I'm referring to is something that actually is a standard that's been around at least 20 years and it's been developed for longer than that. They looked at uh, things like the positions of privacy issues and restrictions to resources. And they have several areas that, that they covered on. And in Joomla, we overlap, whereas we have users that are mapped to roles and permissions are mapped to roles, as we think of a user group that way. Um, we also have role hierarchies, where you can have this role now inherits or has a parent another role. Um, what, what the RBAC also talks about, there's optional features you can have, which we don't have. And I will talk about these a little bit, kind of show ideas of maybe how we can write plugins or um, maybe the direction Joomla can go in its ACL to implement things like constraints, uh, different sessions for a user, and multi-level user management. These can be more advanced things. But I wanted, I figured the World Congress is a good place to talk about some of these more top, uh, advanced topics like this. So what is role-based access control, or RBAC? Um, it's basically, you've got roles here in the middle, and you have permissions and you have users. And the system is set up so it, it's a lot harder. You take the hard things and the things that don't change as often in your organization, such as if they belong to this role, they have these permissions to do this or this or this. But we know in organizations, people come and go much more quickly. And, and assignments might be changed more quickly. So we make it very easy to assign a user to a role, but it's a more technical and maybe a less changing feature of having permissions assigned to a role. So an RBAC system says, we're going to take the hard parts and have maybe one person who's really good at that and put it together. Because this is uh, really a big security issue to um, get everything just right. And this is the technical part. But you can have any person in um, an organization who doesn't know much about CMSs, but they can be smart enough, or very able enough, to be able to assign persons to this role and that role, as long as the roles are well uh, defined, well named. Um, RBAC has things, principles like least privileges, making sure people don't have permissions that they aren't supposed to have separations of duty, so if one they have this role, they don't automatically have another role, we want to separate them. Um, models and organizations policies, and so if, if an organization, so we have these people here, 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 the RBAC system needs to be flexible enough so we can configure it to their needs. Um, it's also flexible to um, for policy modifications, and uh, because sometimes they say we're going to change it, so this role now will take on mailing out the newsletter or something like that. And you can make changes on the fly. 
Um, it also simplifies management of these policies because you just assign a person to a particular role. Uh, Joomla enables you to implement role-based access control, but it does not enforce our back standards. Um, this is what we get out of the box from Joomla, and this, yeah, you could say it fits into the RBAC, but there's other areas I could say argue that it, it violates some of the standards, and I'll touch upon those a little bit later. But like I said before, it's like a bunch of words, all these different rules. You can set up all these different access control rules, but they aren't necessarily role-based. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about implementing uh, RBAC in Joomla, but the idea is you have all your staff, and for each person, you can have a list of all the different roles that they could belong to, and you simply check which ones they belong to. Very simple for someone to be able to uh, assign as, as far as a user manager. So what does a role-based system look like? Well, first, we, uh, the roles are isolated and typically non-overlapping. If you're going to give someone permission to, let's say, manage the inventory on your eShop, there's probably only one role that's going to do that. We don't want to overlap and have several different roles managing that. Uh, that's not a problem because we're going to let people over, you could have them assigned to multiple roles, but usually one role is going to be the one that's going to assign any one permission. So we can have, look at all the different roles that we have in the company, and you can break them into, like a pie here, break them into several different slices, and the permissions do not overlap from one slice to the other slice. We have just enough for these privileges. In other words, any one slice gives you enough for a person in that role but to do what they need to do, but it doesn't escalate privileges and gives you access to things you shouldn't have access to, whether it's a particular action, whether it's an edit thing, or whether it's particular content that you can edit or create or delete. Just enough for what you need to do. And a role-based system has separation of duties so that two different people can both have their own different roles and their duties may be different than each other and they're totally separate. One of the rule examples might be, I guess in accounting, if somebody is uh, making purchases, should not be the same person as the person who's writing checks, for instance, or in the typical security system. And um, I'm sure you can come up with some ideas like this in a content management system that somebody who has permission to do this should not have permission to do that. And now we can separate these duties into different roles and assign a person one or the other, but not to both. User can be assigned to more than one role. And this gets people confused a lot who came from the 1.5 world, where you basically belong only to one role, and that role's got to be everything that, um, that, that you can do. And that's not the case. As we have different <coughs> slices, you give people access to more than one role, and that aggregates into all the permissions and access that they have. And two people can share the same role. People belong to a group, or user group or a role, and um, it's not just assigned to a person, but it's, we assign the permissions to the role, and more than one person can share that same role. And roles reflect the organization's activities um, and policies, that sort of thing. All the different things that people do in an organization, if we do a really good job, we can probably map it to something very similar in a role-based system. So each person can be assigned his own set of roles. So even though we have a fixed number of roles and all these different users, every user can have a different configuration of what permissions they have. And roles are easily added, removed, and transferred. We know the realities of an organization that people come and go. They get different uh, privileges that are given to them at one time and then maybe it's shared with somebody else for a while, or they're on vacation and it's got to be transferred to somebody else. It's very easy. And of course, we do that in Joomla with the click of uh, adding people to a particular role. OK, so I told you what some of the good signs are of a role-based system. and But Joomla can also allow us to do things that aren't so good. Um, what are the signs of a poorly configured ACL? Well, first, let me just point out, this is the model of the ACL when we started with 1.5. We had it, it was very linear, like a, a totem pole. You started out here in public, you weren't logged in. Then when you were logged in, you were registered in the different levels of author, editor, publisher. 
And then we had a back end with our manager, administrator, and super administrator. When the 2.5 ACL came out, it opened up so many opportunities. But apparently because they wanted to keep people's ideas of how access control worked, they modeled it very much after the 1.5. So they had the public manager, administrator, registered author, editor, publisher, and super users. You can see the parallel there is obviously was deliberate. But in a role base, and we also have access levels, public, registered, special, public, registered, special, exactly the same. But in a role based system, we have the opportunity to create all the different roles we want and assign them in any different hierarchy that we want. A big opportunity, but we didn't have it modeled for us when we install a version of 2.5 or even the 3.6. Now it just basically comes out the same way as we had in 1.5. But there's an opportunity for us to create a role-based system. So again, I ask you, what are some signs that maybe we're not doing it quite right? What are the smells that suggest something needs to change with your ACL? <laughs> this is taken after um, a book on refactoring and software engineering, talking about the bad smells of code. When you see something like this, it's probably not set up quite right. So, First thing is that each user is assigned to one and only one role. That may be the case, but if you're forcing it that way, you're probably setting up your ACL focusing more on the user than on the role and the roles that can be interchanged and shared. Second one is the use of denied. I'm not saying the big use of denied, I'm saying any use of denied probably suggests that you aren't doing your ACL correctly. The problem with denied is that every time, if, if anywhere in any of the groups that you belong to, it says you are denied this permission, it doesn't matter how many allows you got, you are denied. The whole purpose of access a uh, role-based system is an aggregate. Every time you add someone to a role, you give them more permissions, more um, responsibilities, duties. But if you have somewhere in there a denied, all of a sudden they can't get access to it anymore and they aren't exactly sure why. It's kind of cryptic, you aren't sure where it is, and it violates the whole rule of aggregating responsibilities. And so if you are tempted to use deny, my suggestion is you probably are configuring your role-based system incorrectly. Now, I have used deny in one project once in a special circumstance, and I found out that I did it only on particular articles because I wanted to let, um, is that county department I showed you? That was actually the place. They had a couple of articles in there. Every time they had an article, it'd show up on the sidebar as a list, like on their menu item. And a couple of those, I did not want them editing because it wasn't content. It was like that curly brackets and inserting a module. I don't want them touching that. So I did not put a deny on their ability to edit or create articles, nor on the category, but on those endnote. Um, articles. So to me, I did find one use for deny, and that was on a very end node mod, uh, item, and that's only for people who um, are in you know, the staff. As a super user, I can get in there and make modifications, but I felt it was very important for me to block them from those two articles that belong in the same category with other articles that they need to edit. And so that was the only time I used deny. Um, Proliferation of roles. Here's, I, I read the forum sometimes to understand what people are saying about things like access control. What are their issues? I learn a lot more and I think, hmm, that's an interesting problem. I've got to try to solve it. Here's an example of a person recently says, I have a list of over 4,000 entries in an Excel file that would like to use child user groups. I would like to import the Excel file contents of Joomla user groups. In other words, he wants to import 4,000 user groups. Mm -hmm. That's not easy to comprehend, it's not easy to manage. Um, this person is probably being so fine-tuned with his user groups that, and, and roles that it's really not a role-based anymore. You should be able to abstractly understand what each role does. If you have 4,000, tell me, how can you understand what 4,000 different pieces do? I, I don't believe you can. Maybe you can use combinations of roles, um, like you know, 10 roles of this and 10 of that makes 100 different combinations. But 4,000. So when you see, and I've seen this once in a while, people want to go all these tons and tons of roles. 
Um, and I think that's a, a smell that you're probably doing your ACL wrong. And if you aren't, don't get it. You know, work with somebody who's worked with these uh, situations before to help you come up with a solution. And another one I think is uh, deep role hierarchies. Um, it's okay once in a while you have to go deep, but if you do, ask yourself, why am I going deep? I think it makes more <coughs> sense to go flat. In other words, here I've got school, class, student, teacher's assistant, teacher, and school administrator down in a linear role. Maybe because we're aggregating responsibilities, not always building upon them, why don't you just say under the school you've got class, school administrator, student, and then check the ones they belong to as opposed to, you know, having everything inherit, inherit, inherit. Sometimes you really want that, but in many cases you don't. So when you get something like this, I think that's a smell to say, rethink it through. Do you really, really, really want to have this long cascading totem pole? I find that I think the best role-based configurations are when it's flatter. You don't have too many levels down, it's more wide, more sibling groups. And that could take me to something as simple as we're used to, the registered author, editor, publisher. Again, follows 1.5. But what if we said author, editor, and publisher are siblings of each other? What if you want to give somebody permission so they can edit content, but they aren't creating content? Or somebody can publish, but they're not going to be an editor or an author. You can't do it with this system. Maybe that works. Maybe that really is your organization's set of policies. But if it isn't, Consider flattening that. Do we really need to make them extend from each other? Back in the 1.5 days, we had to because you can only belong to one group. We don't have to do that anymore. So break out of that frame of thought. The other thing is use of global permissions. And here's a little screen of the uh, ACL manager to the right showing you that if you check somebody as publisher, they have access. Um, at the site level to create, edit, edit stake, and edit own. Now you think, well, this is just for articles. No, it's not. It's for the system wide. If you check author, editor, or publisher, you now are giving permissions for any different component you have out there that's following ACL rules. That you're saying, this person can create, they can edit, they can edit the stake, and they can edit their own. You probably don't want that. Now Saunders said that he actually will delete all of these, you know, author, editor, publisher, manager, and administrator, and start building it up himself, you know, from what, whatever is needed for any particular client. And I think that's actually a good policy. Um, so this doesn't necessarily violate role based, but it probably isn't what you want because it, it escalates the permissions. Um, I've been I've worked with uh, different components that expect you have to belong to one of these three instead of implementing their own ACL, in you know, order you want to be able to create something. But if I, if I give somebody the ability then to author so they can create, not they can create anything in any component. That's not what I want. Okay, so what does a role-based system bias? Bias is security for the clients and the stakeholders and the privileges of least permissions. We give people only the permissions to what they want. We don't give them, you know, we give them permission to act edit this particular piece of content, they don't have permissions to edit other pieces of content unless we checked off the role they belong to. You know, so they can edit those. Um, it buys us usability. This is the big thing. This is really the part that, that drives me more in the ACL. By having um, a role-based system, I now can design a front end or back end based upon the needs of any one particular user in the roles. I mean, if they belong to a, a, a testimonials role, they get to manage the testimonials. And this shows up. If it's an events role, they get to, it, maybe this box will show up and they get to see the events. And so whatever one you select, they see whatever they want to see. Whether it's on this screen, whether it's on the edit form, maybe certain fields they get access to. But that's what it buys us is usability. It also helps us be more flexible with the timeline. As people come and go, as I mentioned before, you can assign people to different roles, you can transfer them to different roles. Somebody's on vacation, you don't have to worry about if the whole thing goes down because that's the only person who has access. You just find somebody else who should have that responsibility, click and give it, them that particular role for that week or two of their off, and then you take it off again. And it also buys us flexibility so that we can model our access control 
based upon any one organization. Every organization is different as far as the people they have, um, the, the different positions they have. I mean, no two are probably that much alike. And so we have to have a system that's very flexible that you can customize and tailor it for any individual organization. And it allows us to do that based upon the task, mapping the task, maybe based upon the uh, hierarchy of the organization. And ease of comprehension. So any user manager can look and say, here are the different permissions we give. And in this example, it says like, News a letter publisher, order fulfillment, payment manager, products manager, subscription manager, and on and on like that. And it's very easy to understand what permissions I'm giving someone within that system once it's set up. I mentioned the RBAC, um, which there's actually a paper on that. You can go online and read more about it. And RBAC has four different models. It's RBAC 0, 1, 2, and 3. Um, and they, uh, here's the next one. RBAC 0 basically says it's a role-based system. It's a very base system. RBAC 1 says not only we have roles, but we have role hierarchies. And RBAC 2 offers constraints, which is something we haven't, don't have in Joomla. <coughs> but you, you'll be able to understand it when I explain it. Um, and then we have uh, RBAC 3 is a consolidated one, which has hierarchies plus constraints, which can introduce a couple extra issues as well. Um, so Joomla will allow us out of the box, we can configure it pretty well for our back one, role-based hierarchies. And uh, that's actually pretty powerful, and I haven't had too many times I've needed much more than that. But I do want to talk about, I want to focus on our back to show what can be there, and maybe give us ideas as far as plugins we write, or maybe someday uh, evolution of the core code in Joomla to start implementing some of these other features if we think it has value for our users. <coughs> um, I've already explained roles. It's basically a role is a unified set of activities, permissions, duties um, that exist within an organization. And we have the ease of assignment. So we have somebody who works, sets up the system, sets up the more complicated things that don't change very often, and then it's very easy for us to change roles. So a lot of what I've talked about is what we, we say RBAC is zero. Um, RBAC 1 introduces hierarchies, and we are used to that as well. So in Joomla's case, for instance, if you belong to this user group, you also belong to the parent user group and also to that parent user group. And so every each, each, these dark red ones that you belong to, you also belong to the more pinkish colored ones. Um, that's a hierarchy thing, and it has a lot of value if it's set up correctly. But RBAC 2 introduces something called constraints. Now, what are constraints? I mean, that's really what you think it is. I have several different types of constraints. I'm just going to give you an example. First one would be temporal constraints, or basically time. Um, this might mean you want to say a user in this group has these permissions, but only during 8 to 5 or only on Monday through Friday. Um, perhaps there's some reasons you want them only to be able to do things at a certain particular time. Or there's location. Uh, maybe you want to say they can only edit content when they're in the office using this IP address or something on their computer that says they're of this particular location, but they aren't somewhere else. That actually has value. While I'm gone, I have one of my assistants who's working on a um, uh, proprietary system that, we, that uh, he can't be sharing with other people. And I'm letting him do some work. But I mean, I would like love it if I had constraints say, hey, he can only work on this from this particular IP. We do have the firewall set up, so that's the case. But in other words, I maybe can't monitor him. But I, because I have a, a non-disclosure agreement with my client, I have to make sure that I'm doing the best job I can with people who are working for me. And so it would be nice if I had constraints where I can say, this person can work on this only from a certain IP address or only certain hours of the time. So it does have a value. Another one is mutually exclusive. And this one is a little more challenging probably to implement. The other ones I probably could implement with a plug-in to say, you know, just basically deny them at certain times that it doesn't exist. But mutually exclusive might mean, let's say, okay, a purchasing manager and a payroll manager 
um, one person can purchase, but the other person can't submit payment to them. You want to have two different people. Um, you can also be like, uh, you have a security officer who's managing users and their permissions. And uh, maybe you want to um, so you want to have a centralized officer, but you want to have some other sub-officers, and you can only be one and not the other. So the whole thing is, if you belong to one group, you can't belong to the other group. Now, there's got to be some reason for why you don't want that to happen, but you can imagine there are situations like that. So how do we implement that as a constraint? That would be a little harder to enforce. And then there's prerequisites. You can only belong to this user group if something else is true. If you belong to a particular IP or address or geographical area, or if you belong to another group, some other kind of prerequisite. Obviously, Joomla is not set up to handle details like that. Cardinality. Maybe we're saying you can only have one person in this role at a time. Maybe you say it has to have three people at one time. Which, of course, then what happens if you try to remove somebody from that role? Um, there's, how does the system know? What does it do? There's issues involved. So it's not that simple and straightforward, and that's probably why it hasn't been implemented. But there could be needs for um, having cardinality uh, basically uh, be, be an important constraint in, if the organization has rules like that. And then there could be two-factor authorization that maybe in this particular group you only are going to be taking on that group if you uh, um, authenticated yourself with a two-factor authentication. Otherwise, that group doesn't pick up. You can see reasons for why some company might want something like that, especially when it's more administrative privileges in addition to their content management privileges. And then um, we have the RBAC3, which is basically the consolidated. It has roles, it has hierarchies, it has constraints, mixed with them all together. A couple of other issues that might come up is what do you happen if you have mutual exclusion? Does that mean within a role? Does that mean within a hierarchy? Same with cardinality. So there's a little bit more complexity to get introduced. But a very uh, thorough system would maybe introduce all three of these into one. So additional features that the RBAC talks about that I'd like to bring up, and I'm mostly bringing these up just to kind of throw out ideas that maybe you can think about it, you know, can we implement these or not? Or do they have value? One of the things it talks about is sessions. That's that a person who logs into the system, um, maybe logs in as a content manager type of roles. But when they want to do some, maybe they also have administrative type of roles, but when they do that, they need to log in as an administrator as opposed to um, the content manager. Then, they, because when they're doing content management, should they really see all these things uh, that, does, that goes along for managing the website? Um, and maybe extra details and things like that. So you have a simpler one for content, another one for administrator. Um, so we, but this is letting the user, his or her own discretion, decide which role they want to log into. Now the challenge for Joomla is when you have a login account, you have to have a unique email address. And so how do you give a person two accounts? Unless you have create some forwarders and you give them uh, multiple email addresses that they can use, and each one goes to their own primary account. And so there's ways around that. But that would be an interesting concept to give someone both administrative uh, permissions and content management permissions, but yet they're separate. You only have one or the other at any one time. And that does improve usability. Um, user management is something they talk a lot about. It's very important to get the right person as a user manager because you're almost handing the keys to your website to that particular person. Especially if they're a super admin. They can make anyone else a super admin. You might be the owner of the company and the website, but if you've got somebody else who's doing the user management, um, you better trust that person pretty well because they can give it to uh, somebody else by deliberately or inadvertently uh, permissions that they should not have. The person needs to be knowledgeable as to what it is they're actually doing as they're managing the permissions. Uh, this Part of it's user management, part of it is actually setting up the system and setting up permissions. Um, it's a very important role. Uh, and actually the RBAC paper talks a lot about this particular issue and details that beyond what we've covered a lot in Joomla. Um, and then there's the question of what if you have uh, a small team that does management and not just an individual. Do they all have 
same abilities? What if the two of them are super admins and one wants to cut the other one up? Or if they're, um, you know, how do you do that? Um, here's an, another uh, posting in the forum I saw recently. I have 12 groups of users. Each of them has a group leader. This group leader should have the admin rights for the group, meaning he can add, edit, and delete users in his group. How can I install this? Well, we don't have that necessarily in Joomla. In Joomla, for user managers, we only have really two levels. At the top level is like the super admin where you all can set permissions and you can set other super admins and then you have another level just below it that you, they can't create the, the uh, super admins, but they themselves can create other uh, users with their privileges or less. What happens if we want to have a hierarchy of different users? Something like this. I've seen it before when people say I want to have a sports team or a sports league, and I have all these different uh, soccer or whatever whatever sport it is, and each one has their own team, and they can add and remove people on that, and but they only can add those particular people. I've built customized systems that allow for that sort of thing by putting some rules in, but I have to customize it. It's nothing out of the box. Some custom code, do something like that. Could we do this automatically through Joomla? And there are some serious challenges to something like this. Primarily, it would be a very complex system, and if people are already struggling enough with the ACL, I think something like this would be very challenging. It could be done by somebody who understands it. Let me explain. If I say this person here has permission for his two people there, what does that mean? I mean, how do I know which people he belongs to? If he belongs to this group, does he have permissions then for other groups? Does that mean he can create other groups? If he can, can he create groups that exist over here? Which kind of violates the whole rule, so you have to set it up just right. Um, and when we, when we can manage those people, can he assign them to user groups? And to which user groups can he assign them to? Can he assign them to user groups that exist over here, which would again violate this whole security of running down like a tree? So what permissions do they have? What user groups can they assign? Can they, if they're in charge of that group, can they create, edit, delete? There's a lot of configuration that goes on. So I do think we could create something like this in Joomla, but it's going to have to be very wide open in configuration, and the person using it has to be very skilled. It's really a specialty tool, and I would suggest it probably be more of an extension you would add on for the few people who have a need for something of this level. But there are people who do need something like this, and we don't just, I don't know, Sandra, do you know anybody who has a, something, a multi-user system that people can use to assign? Uh, I do get this question quite a lot. But uh, no, but there's no out-of-the-box solution you can install and configure. Not yet. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if um, I think it can be done. I've actually played with it, and I've had some luck putting something like together. Basically, I have to have my own component, which is kind of like a, secondary user manager, but I impose the rules on it. But I have to know what I'm doing when I'm configuring it. And it was more of a prototype. I haven't made it so I can release it. <coughs> I'll take a picture. Okay. <laughs> so our back in, in Joomla, um, as I mentioned before, um, we've got like words can form sentences, but they don't have to. And a user group, um, this is a group of users, and just because you create a user group doesn't mean it's a role. I saw some discussions a year ago talking about, you know, the new, wanted, some people wanted to redo some of the ACL and Joomla, and they just wanted to change the name of user groups to roles. Maybe they were going to also change some meaning to it. But just because you change user group to, no, a role in Joomla is a user group. But just because you change the name of user group to role does not make it a role. You can still abuse it. Um, and so I, I want to emphasize that. It's, it can, you have to understand what it means for something to be a role in the ways that I, somewhat in the ways that I've described, and also like in the RBAC paper. Um, you need to understand Joomla's ACL. This is my model that I built. When I give talks explaining how ACL works, you've got the user groups, and then people are assigned to groups. You've got permissions on the components, categories, and objects that correspond to each different user group. You've got modules and, and items here that have access levels. 
and access levels respond to groups. I mean, there's more detail than I can go into in a short talk like this. Um, I have given a few talks before on this particular topic um, with open source training, OS training. I did a video for them a while back, uh, and that's the URL. If you just go to open source training and do some search for <coughs> my name or um, ACL, you'll maybe see the video where I, <coughs> and I go through that chart and I explain all the different pieces and how it works. Um, that's the best way for me to kind of convey more how, how that works than trying to do it in the five minutes that we have here. Um, so there's a really big art to uh, roles. It's knowing how to map an organization's tasks and responsibilities and groupings into particular user groups that big roles. Um, it's not rocket science, but it just doesn't always fall in place on its own. It's an art, and the more you practice something, the better you get at it, and, and the better you get at getting this correct. And as I mentioned, um, my whole purpose of setting up roles, for the most part, is really on the back end. I want to get it, whenever you belong to a certain role, maybe you see this role here, order fulfillment, I see the order fulfillment box. Site auditors, I'll maybe see um, some information about the site. And store manager, I'll see this box here with the different links to uh, the particular e-commerce store. And this person then would be events manager and testimonials, and they see a totally different back end because of the roles. I'm personalizing it, I'm tailoring it to the needs of the users who are content managers, to the needs of the organization and their particular policies that they want. Um, I think that's the most powerful way that I, I see Joomla's ACL and roles um, working. Um, here's an example again. You've got the roles here, and e users are easily assigned. And um, I basically create each role as a user group, and they just click and check that. And there's an example again. I try to go very simple on the, on the content manager's uh, back end, the way it looks. I actually have it in my own. I call it a client template for the clients to use as opposed to uh, using ISIS, which you have to be careful to say using ISIS these days, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what an interesting. <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> um, and then I also use it so I, I've got a tool, and I probably will demonstrate this tomorrow in my, my talk, um, for generating back end links. I can go to any one particular page. And if I have this plugin running, it actually will generate a link. And I click, I can go ahead and um, click and save a new link. And when I get that link, it, if I set the filters here, I got it published in the category about, and I'm only showing two levels, I think it is, these in blue here. I click this, it's got all these filters set there. So when I have a link and I click on that link, it goes to this page with these filters preset. And it, that basically means they, the users don't have to go, they only see the categories of, that they're supposed to be able to see, makes it much more streamlined for them. And then I also use it for uh, determining what fields I want to show on an edit form. Uh, here's the contact form. And why do we give people all these fields when they're not relevant for that particular company or for that particular role? We can set it up as they belong to a certain role. We have rules going as I override the layout file. I have rules going on that will remove or hide some of these fields so they see only the fields that they need to see. And they don't have to worry about knowing which fields do I fill out, which ones do I not fill out. That's the problem when you go with forms like this. So having a role-based system buys us better usability for our users. And um, that was a summary of role-based access control, how it relates to Joomla. Um, let see what time we've got here. I'm almost out of time, but if there's any questions, I'll take some. So how much training do you give users to, to support what you're showing here that you've implemented? How much training? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I said I, there's... I just don't have it. Generally, my base just doesn't have the... We, got, we really love front-end um, access and the middle of that. Just don't, we have smaller clients, maybe. Sure. I'm really curious about that. Well, you know, I, I just started out, I started digging around and experimenting. And because I wanted to do what I was just showing as far as showing people only what they need to show. Um, so basically, it's like if you study it enough, you'll, you'll pick it up. Um, there are, I've got some slide share presentations out there that help show what I'm doing. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about how to tailor the back end, which ties into ACL, but not totally. Um, not, not all, not, it's about more than that. Um, 
I think a lot of it is networking here and finding people who work with it. And maybe you need to, maybe you need somebody to help you out, show you how, and like teach somebody to fish, and then you know how to fish yourself. I'm really asking how much training do you do to your clients? Oh, oh. What, I'm asking about the sophistication level of your clients to support. It this. depends. I mean, I get some clients, and that, I covered that. I do cover that in other talks. Um, you got to know boundaries. Right. For every client, you have to say how much are they going to take on. And I've got one client that, well, they'll have an admin staff that's going to manage the whole back end. That's just only, these guys are like web developers, I mean, code developers. Then this other staff, they're only going to be managing content and some modules, and uh, that's it. No menuing, um, no security, none of that sort of thing. They only see the parts that they need to. Um, and I do have some other examples I don't have time to show you now. Right. But there's some places, I try to also make you go to the front, you go to that, I actually do use ISIS sometimes for my, um, like the client template, because I just get rid of all the other garbage they've got, put in just the right modules that they need. And my, I might even label one of the modules front page, and I have a list of links to where you edit this module, where you edit that one, and take it straight that way. So I try, my whole thing is to think like they do and streamline it, so I'm not giving them things that they don't have to worry about. Um, and it's very intuitive. I use language that they can relate to. Um, I've given this little joking story about using a CCK. And um, so I have K9 for, th I mean, sorry, K2. <laughs> K2 to go to a pet store. And the pet store owner says, well, why is that K2? I'm selling dogs. Is it supposed to be K9? You know? So I mean, K2 means nothing to him. But if I said puppies, that means something to him. So part of it is when you tailor things, you now can do a better job. You don't have to train them as much. So you take a copy of the ISIS template and then strip a bunch of stuff out yeah. and then assign that to some back-end user. So it well, it's, it's, here's it's really simple in the sense that I don't give users access to the special user group. I give them their own user group and then that user group will throw up my own links in there. Maybe they don't even get the main menu. I don't care really? because I'm giving them links to only the parts they need to. So, and then I create, but I also, you know, I'm a developer. I wrote a component that I can generate modules and plugins that applies to use component creator for creating components. And so it's no problem for me to create an admin component that's getting just what they want. Um, and I do have, I do have the IQ project is one of my kind of branch, it's not my real business, but it's like a branch. I have a place where I sell for a few dollars um, some of the a suite of tools. And here you client links. We've got the, the link generator and it generates a link here, and now I can create modules that actually goes in the admin, and if they belong to this user group, they get to see that particular module. And then they only see, and I create the links I want, and each link is now taking them to not only the, the component and the stream, but it will preset their filters. Uh, each time they click a link, they go here with that filter, and they go with that filter. And so, Took the time to develop this and working with it a bit, and I understand when you come in fresh, it's still not quite all clear, but it's doable, and that's why I think Joomla is a very customizable CMS. And if we learn how to customize it, we give our clients a better product. Was that our sign? Uh, maybe it is. <laughs> Thank you.